Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. We're going to go over 13 reasons why we're headed into a recession. I got this idea from Don Durrett. We've had him on the show before. I'll put a link up here if you want to watch the video. Don has a website, goldstockdata.com, link in the show notes, and he came out with 50 reasons why we're headed into a recession, and we picked our favorite 13. All right, right into it. 13. Number 13, demographics. The boomers are retiring in larger numbers, okay? So we have more people entering the retirement and fewer people taking their place contributing to the system. Number 12, shoplifting and looting is out of control. Where I live in the communist state of California, we have businesses leaving the state because they have so many shoplifters and nobody doing anything about it. Who would want to have a business in an area like that, right? If they steal 400 bucks or less of merchandise, there are no consequences. Yeah, clown world. Number 11, increasing worker strikes, pushing up wages, unemployment is rising, working hours decreasing, okay? I've seen two strikes in my little city here in the last week. We have more people on unemployment, and the people that are left working are working fewer hours, all right? Less GDP. Number 10, record gold purchases by central banks. Currency is leaving the banks. All right, I'm going to share my screen here, and we can see a graphic of this, courtesy of the World Gold Council. Now, take a look at this. This blue here is net selling of gold, and since 2010, this is all net buying. Look at this last year right here. I mean, that is... 1,136 tons of gold. For every ton of gold, it's 32,000 ounces. 32,000 coins for one of those. And we have over 1,000. And look at where most of the buying is coming from. Russia, China, and India. Okay, we all know about BRICS, right? B-R-I-C-S. We will go over that when we get to number four. All right. Okay, uh, number nine. Massive and increasing trade deficit, currently 75 billion a month. That's almost a trillion per year. Trade deficit, what is that? That basically means that the US is importing more goods than it's exporting by the tune of 75 billion a month, all right? 75 billion a month. Uh, here's an example of that. I recently did a tour of a container ship, and this was a container ship coming up from Guatemala and then dropping it off at the port and then going back down to Guatemala. And after we did the tour, I was like, what are, what's all your product? Is it all bananas? And he said, yep, every single Connex box is filled with bananas and then it gets shipped across the US. And I thought, that's pretty cool. And I said, what do we export down to Guatemala? And he said, air. And I said, air? And he said, yeah, every single container is empty. When we go back down, we fill it back up with bananas and then we come back up. And I turned to the crowd and I said, has anyone ever heard of a trade deficit? This is a perfect example of it. So literally as Americans, we're printing up paper dollars, sending them down to Guatemala, exporting our inflation, and we're getting bananas for it. All right, trade deficit. Number eight, the interest rate hikes will have a lag effect. The Fed has had their foot on the gas pedal, just increasing interest rates for the last year. It takes a while for that to filter through the system and for these zombie companies to go under. I think we're only just beginning to feel the effects of the first rate hikes that they started a year ago. Uh, number seven, student loan debt repayments will begin in October. Remember the forbearance that we had on student loan debts? That's coming back. We've been enjoying not paying student loans for three years or so. Well, that got shot down student loan repayments are starting back up come october interest start interest payments start uh september 1st number six six stocks make up 80 to 90 percent of the stock market gains loan defaults are on the rise zombie corporations are going under all right we got 500 companies in the s p 500 six of them make up for almost all of those gains let that sink in for a moment number five Credit card debt is at an all-time high. Credit card delinquencies, foreclosures, and bankruptcies are on the rise. That one speaks for itself. If you have to go and spend money on credit card debt, you're not buying things like cars and houses. All right. Number four, 
BRICS are expanding and adding to de-dollarization. They have a big meeting coming up August 22nd to 24th, and I am going to share my screen here. This is probably the most exciting one of all other than number one. All right. These are the proposed BRICS. Okay, so right now, this is courtesy of Modern Diplomacy. I will put the link in the show notes below so you guys can check this out. Currently, the BRICS countries are Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which you can see they're in red right here. There's over 30 companies, 30 countries that want to join BRICS, okay? And we can go to a full list of them right here. The two I'm concerned about uh, personally is uh, Kazakhstan because we have a bet on Kazatomprom in a uranium miner. Not great that they want to join BRICS. Uh, also, the one I don't like to see is uh, Nicaragua, uh, simply because I want to buy property there, <laughs> selfishly, <laughs> but that's what we got. So BRICS are uh, countries that are trying to get outside of the U.S. dollar. Remember, we're throwing out sanctions like candy. We, we removed Russia from the dollar system, so they can't use it. So these countries are coming together, and they're trying to come up with a currency that is outside of the U.S. dollar. Right now, almost all outside international trade is done in U.S. dollars. These countries want to come together and create their own currency, possibly gold-backed. That will be interesting. Uh, and create their own currency so they don't have to do it inside of the U.S. dollar. Now, I'm going to share my screen again here, and we're going to take a look at our fearless leader, uh, Janet Yellen, and how she feels about the uh, U.S. dollar uh, possibly be having some competition for reserve currency. So on the currency issue, I just want to reiterate what I've said in the past, which is I think the United States can rest assured that the dollar is going to play the dominant role in international uh, transactions, facilitating international transactions, and um, serving as a reserve currency in the years ahead. Um, I don't see that role being threatened by any development, um, including the one, one that you've mentioned. Uh, I've said previously and would reiterate that um, because of the role of the dollar and its um, ability to enable us to um, implement sanctions, there certainly is motivation in countries around the world to find an alternative. But okay, well, we got uh, uh, it's it's the dollar's ability to sanction countries. It's not our politicians. I I, I guess we were we were wrong on that. I stand corrected. Okay, number three, U.S. government interest payments are out of control. All right, four hundred and seventy-six billion in twenty twenty-two was the interest payment. The year before that, in 2021, 352 billion. So from 2021 to 2022, the interest payments went up 35%. Okay, to put this into perspective, our national defense budget is 766 billion in 2022. All right, so our interest payments, just on the interest, is 62% of our national defense budget. Crazy. Number two, the Fed is fighting inflation. Consumer buying power is zapped by inflation. If that doesn't forecast a recession, I don't know what is. And the number one reason why we're headed into an inflate into a recession is the inverted yield curve. What is that? We will share our screen and show you right here. All right. This is the 10 year treasury minus the two-year treasury uh, yield. So basically, this graph goes back 40 years. This gives us a pretty good uh, time horizon. All right, so the way we can read this is this black line right across the middle here means that uh, uh, any anytime we're below that means that we are in clown world, all right? Anytime that we're above that is normal economic uh, times. Each of these gray bars going up and down means that we entered a recession okay so we can see when the 10-year bond is paying less than the two-year bond it goes below this black line and we enter clown world and then as we break out of that and we go back into normal shortly after that we get a recession 
Okay, then we go again here, that was in 1990. And then we go again here, this is the dot-com bubble. Okay, so bond traders realize that, uh-oh, something's not good. We want short duration debt, we don't want long duration debt. And so the bond traders get a better yield for short duration debt, the two year. And once we climb out of that, boom, recession. And we go again. Here, we're in 2006 and the great financial crisis, yield curve inversion, short duration debt pays better than long duration debt. Climb out of that, boom, recession. Then we started to have it for a hot minute here. See, we just barely got below right here in, in 2019. And then they started injecting a bunch of liquidity into the uh, uh, market from um, COVID. Real quick recession for a month or two. And then we climbed out of it. And look at where we are here. I mean, we haven't had negative interest like this in over 40 years. And what we're waiting for is we're waiting for this to climb back out, enter the recession. And when that happens, gold and silver are going to take off. So this is how we protect ourselves from recession. This is how we make money from recession is we invest in the precious metals because when people become concerned about the purchasing power of their currency, they run to the precious metals. This is what we're waiting on right here. We are entering recession. I am almost 100% certain of it. If you want a little more um, uh, certainty of it, if you watch Lance Roberts with uh, on the Wealthy On channel last week, Lance said that his firm studies 10 different yield curves. So I just showed you the most common one, the 10s and the 2s. He studies the, the 10 year minus the three month. He studies the two year minus the three month. He studies the 20 year minus the 10 year. He said of the 10 different yield curves that they study, they have all inverted. And when you look back over history, 100% of the time that this has happened, we've had a recession. I believe we're going into one now. And I think that the best way that we can prepare for this and actually prosper from it is to get ahead of it. We don't bet on the S&P 500 because that is going to tank when this happens. Uh, we bet on precious metals. If you guys want to get some physical, there's a link down in the notes below where I get mine personally. I hope you guys got something out of this. Leave a comment, question below, and I will talk to you next time.